Okay, so here we go. Our first best of three of the day. Going up against Bretonia. And for us, we have brought Kislev. But war wagons, some bear cavalry, and uh, pit fighters, along with some spears, to make sure that our army doesn't get overrun by cavalry. For Bretonia, we have questing knights, very expected. And that is because of their high AP, which is very strong against our cavalry. Uh, let's see, the war wagons will be moving up. And we will be burning a bit of ammunition hitting these peasant mobs. Uh, but I think we have enough ammo where we don't really need to turn off fire at will right now. It does give us a slight advantage, actually slowly chunk them, chunking them down. So that should be fine. Our huntsmen are progressing too. And we should be able to get these peasants routed off quite quickly. The front line of the Bretonians is quite thin. It makes me feel like they have some, uh, some cavalry in the forest. So we'll be keeping an eye on that, being as careful as we can. And we'll pull back the flagellants to make sure that they don't die to these peasant archers. That would definitely not be a fun way to go. And just pulling them into safety. And now bringing our demogriffs into position. Stop uh, all this cavalry. And the war wagons want to be finding some good targets. We'll be hitting the questing knights with them. And then just uh, kiting back to safety if they do get chased. Uh, it's buying a lot of time for our huntsmen, that's for sure. But are we trading up against the Bretonians? I'm not entirely sure yet. The main problem is that uh, he has trebuchets that are able to fire in on my huntsmen. They're doing a pretty good amount of damage. Uh, however, we can't actually use our Demogriff Knights to chase off these peasants. And we'll be sending in uh, Flagellants too to help in that fight. The huntsmen will trade really well into Peasant Bowmen. And it's just going to be the slow advance. Let's see here. Yep, yeah, we're just we're just very slowly advancing, trying to keep our Demogriff Knights safe. They will be constantly getting pelted by these Trebs. Definitely a little bit unfortunate, but not the worst. Now, the cavalry is still positioning on the left flank, so we're going to bring yet more infantry there to support. And we'll also bring in our Demogriffs to try and help there. Big dive in from these Paladins. Could be bad for us. We'll pull back the Demogriffs, because I think they lose that fight. And then we'll try and surround them with flagellants. We have our huntsmen targeting them down. And as long as we can block the cavalry, then I suspect our war wagons will be able to do okay here. Now we have a big fight in the center with the heroes engaging. We've sent in the flagellants and we have spears coming into the back to surround that cavalry. Uh, we've lost a unit of demogriff knights. Turns out I did not pull them away to safety. Uh, and that's that's a bit of a worry. We botched the charge here too. So we take a lot of heat on our Demogriff Knights. But we may be able to get some really nice value over here. I'm going to cast a Lightning Bolt spell over there. And here we go. Hey, pretty good. So uh, that worked out pretty well. We did have to sacrifice our other unit of Demogriffs. But nevertheless... Still went pretty well. We hit the, the cavalry quite hard. We still have the war wagons, which are able to pelt them down. So hopefully we'll be able to pull back on that front. And from there, our infantry should be able to carry out the rest of the day. We'll use a wind blast from our caster. Hit the archers and get them off the map as soon as possible. And then we'll be getting ready for another thunderbolt onto the cavalry. Although it looks like they've spread out a little bit more now. So... Let's see, how are we doing? How are we doing? We still have a strong infantry advantage, and the fact that it's just uh, blessed field trebuchets is really good for us. The trebs are not especially scary in the late game against our infantry, and we can even use our flagellants to start chasing them down. Our war wagons are generally pretty safe now that the cavalry is gone for Bretonia. And uh, from here, I'm feeling very confident now even though the balance of power is slightly disfavored for us. Of course, the Fane Chantress is still pretty scary, and uh, especially the double Paladin, too. 
They'll be saving another wind blast for this blob of peasants just to get them routed. And it's the slow march towards the trebuchets now. Set up a nice wind blast here by just holding our position. That should be able to route those guys off. And now with the lack of cavalry from my opponent, I think the war wagons will want to start directing their firepower onto the single entities, if possible. Uh, we'll have to see if they can do that though. The paladins will be pretty hard to actually shake off the tail of, uh, of my war wagons. But we have so many of them that it could still work out. The Enchantress 2 is quite low. And let's see. Yeah, if we can actually kill her here, we'll make sure our Lord is targeting her. That will be very good. Uh, if she doesn't have any healing, it means that these Paladins will be much less effective. Uh, generally, they'd be pretty hard to take out with the War Wagons. But in this instance, they are they are already pretty beat up. And, uh, and we should be able to get them routing. See, the Huntsmen have finally fallen to the triple trebuchet. But that is not too much of a problem. They, they've they used up most of their ammunition. And our Lord can even beat up this Paladin uh, quite well himself. Doing pretty good. Just barely not dying. And it's looking like we've secured ourselves a victory. This Paladin shouldn't be able to come back. The ammunition on our War Wagons is still very high too. And uh, we'll just be chasing him off with those units. Just to really make sure that he doesn't come back. He's the biggest threat left for Bretonia. And with him gone, I believe that's army losses. So nice. That actually went okay. The war wagons did quite well. They stayed safe. And really, the main problem was that I lost all my Demogriff Knights. Uh, we just sort of threw them away unnecessarily. And, oof, geez, look at that. Terrible damage value. Uh, the war wagons actually not really getting their damage value either. Shooting peasants a lot of the time. So then what actually won it here? I guess it might have just been the combined arms of my army. It actually looks like it was my infantry that did surprisingly well uh, when we surrounded the cav. Not to mention my heavens caster with 1400 damage value. Mostly from that single Thunderbolt that likely saved the game for us. So, there we go. That's one up for us. On to the next week. So, here we go for our second game. We are playing as Chaos, going for a pretty meme build, but nevertheless uh, bringing a lot of tools that are still useful against the Dowie. We have our chariots. We have a bunch of great weapon uh, infantry. And let's see. Uh, oh, these are gyro bombers. Okay. So we're going to be juking with our chariots to try and avoid damage from them. And we really do not want to get our chosen bombed up by them. So if they do fly overhead, we'll have to. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have to juke with the chosen. This is indeed a Cornite themed army. And we're just going to be dodging as hard as we can with the chariots to make sure that. They negate as much damage from the gyrocopters as possible. Not entirely impossible to dodge with them. And they will eventually run out of ammunition. They are now shooting on my Chosen. Luckily for us, however, the Chosen are quite tanky. And his bombs shouldn't be able to do too much. Looks like he's going for a bombing run, so we'll have to be a little bit careful. And uh, we're going to be dodging as hard as we can to avoid that damage. Some inefficient shots are going in onto my Chosen. And uh, as long as we can just negate the damage, we should be fine. Looks like a bombing run might be going down on these guys. Nope, just uh, some sideways shots into the Chosen. But the shots are actually missing pretty hard. Uh, he is positioning for a bombing run. So we'll just keep dancing around with them. And slowly advance towards his army. He is set up for a pretty nice uh, bombing run once the engage actually gets started. That's going to be a little bit of a worry. But as soon as we can get fighting, we should be good. Our chariots will be diving in, and Archeon will be uh, rushing into the midst of combat to face off against Grom Brindle. We have Forsaken moving into the back. 
and the Forsaken will do quite good when it comes to, uh, let's see, when it comes to actually killing Slayers and running down the back line. And now with our Chariots on the way, we should be able to shut down these Iron Breakers. So let's see, there's not too much here. That's a threat for our Chariots. So we'll just slam them into the side and then just get that engagement going as quickly as possible. See, we'll need to pull them back a bit. Uh, and we just want to make sure that the Iron Breakers don't throw their blasting charges. Archeon will continue running in. Our Forsaken will try pushing in through the flank. And our Chaos Warriors are going to be advancing. See, this is uh, just a unit of cannons that we'll be able to take out. And now we're going to bring back our Chariots. And continue advancing with those chosen. Archeon is diving in on Felix now as he is a much larger threat. And our Forsaken will be slipping into the back lines. He does get a volley off on my Chaos Warriors. Which is pretty unfortunate. But we do finally dive in onto the back. And we can't even get Marauders onto these Slayers. Which is actually a pretty nice engagement for them. Chosen are now in combat. And if Archeon can... I guess we'll send him in on the Iron Breakers. That actually feels okay. And our Forsaken uh, will we'll try charging in. We want to get into the fight as quickly as possible. And our Chariots are going to be hitting the back line. And the Iron Breakers. Trying to, get, uh, trying to get some routes now. Bombs will be dropping on my Chaos Warriors by the looks of it. Little bit of a... Uh, a little bit of a sketchy bombing run. We managed to avoid most of the damage there. Which is good. But uh, we still have quite the task here. Our chariots will be able to route off the quarrelers, which is nice. The warriors in the back are on their way out. And Archeon is putting a lot of damage in onto these iron breakers. Uh, there's not much else that we're really worried about aside from them. So we're happy to, uh, to just try and trade out into them. The iron breakers are quite scary. But it looks like we might even be able to route off one of them. I'm going to send in the chariot to try and route them off. We'll also hit up these quarrelers. And uh, extended the extended leadership on my chosen, actually, from chevroning them up, has proven pretty nice. They just barely hold long enough for the iron breakers to route. And we can begin chasing them off. Forsaken will be diving in on the dwarf warriors now. And another bombing run is going down onto my troops here. But just a little bit botched means that uh, we'll be avoiding most of the damage there. The Chosen have been intentionally spread out so that they wouldn't take as much damage from the bombs. Uh, which is definitely quite good. So there we go. The Iron Breakers are now down. Which means that the main source of damage from the Dwarves is out of the picture. Uh, what we've done is uh, we engaged uh, correctly so that they wouldn't be able to throw their bombs. And by negating that damage, we bought a lot of space for our elite infantry. So now it's really just the single entities of the dwarves that uh, we have to worry about now. And they aren't especially scary. Uh, just because we have Archeon, who is a very strong duelist himself. And uh, we have a ton of infantry too that will be able to bog them down. So expecting Felix to fall shortly. And... Let's see, after that, it's going to be likely Grom Brindle. Uh, we don't really have to chase down the Rune Lord, as he's not too much of a threat. And uh, as for the Dwarf Infantry, we just gotta use our Chariots to hit them in the back. There are some Slayers too, but they aren't very effective versus our Armored Infantry. Uh, but now we have Grom Brindle actually diving in onto Archeon. A little bit of a worry. Uh, we don't want Archeon to die, but he did just get smoke bombed, so he is slowed. And we're going to be focusing Grom Brindle with him, since that's the largest threat. We'll be sending in the chariots to try and knock them down. This will reduce the overall damage that happens to Archeon. And it looks like he will be able to disengage now. So we'll do that and wheel our chariots over here to the flank to deal with the quarrelers. Archeon now on the run. We've surrounded Grom Brindle with Chosen. So we should be able to stay relatively safe. Now that he's in a better position, we'll have him fight the Rune Lord. 
we have lost our chariots though and the lords the single entities for the dwarves are actually still going pretty strong Archeon doesn't have any healing he is no uh Sigvald and that's a pretty bad situation Grombrindle getting quite close he's on the verge of routing but it looks like Archeon might just barely hold it but no he breaks that's really bad it means it's just our elite infantry left they're going to be holding pretty well but Losing Archeon like that and taking way too much damage in the Hero Blob may very well be uh, what dooms us here. Our Chariots do come back. We'll send them in towards the Quarrelers. Definitely don't want to be having our troops uh, routing just because of getting shot in the back. And uh, we're going to be relying on these uh, chosen great weapons here. We still have 26 models with them and they are beasts. Just absolute beasts in combat. So... They may still be able to uh, to win out the day here. They are gold chevrons, so they do actually have insane melee defense values. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Chariots are finally getting uh, closing in on the quarrelers. Charge bonus will keep them from routing. And hopefully we can take them out. But, oh man, the chariots are gone. And I think the hero squad may have just barely pulled it out. Ah, darn it. Oh, chaos, uh, chaos chosen. Still holding, but nah, they, they can't win it there. Oh, darn it! GG! Darn, we almost had it. We almost had it. Uh, yeah, chevrons are the levels of the units. I think... Ah, oh, we, we very nearly had these guys pay off. Uh, we did route off the iron breakers really well. Uh, the, there wasn't much we could have done really with the chariots to keep them safe. But I think the major misplay there was Archeon. Uh, Archeon was a... He, he did okay, but he couldn't really fight Grombrindle and Felix together. That was rough. Ready? For the third game, we're going Norska against Skaven. And what do we got? We got a huge army from the Skaven, mostly Skaven slaves, and we'll be pushing through as quickly as possible. Poison Wind Mortars and Skaven slaves in the front line. Pretty vulnerable to our mobile forces here. We'll be moving them in to avoid taking any poke damage. We'll pull back real quick just to make sure that their slings don't hurt my troops for too much. And now that they need to be on the run, we can once again advance with our army. Uh, Throt the Unclean is here too. And also spotting some warp grinders that we'll have to worry about. But... Uh, just, just starting off this game, I think we should be pretty fine. Thrott doesn't do a whole ton of damage to our wolf rats, just because uh, they're pretty plentiful. And they'll be chasing off the Skaven slave slingers, while the rest of our mobile forces deal with the other slinger. So, so far, some pretty nice trades. Not a huge play, since these guys are only worth 600 gold, and we are taking some Giselle fire on the approach. Some uh, <laughs> Poison Wind Globes actually friendly firing. The Skaven Slaves. I think that is uh, a good trade for my opponent, though. But uh, here we go. The frontline fight is engaging, and we want to collapse the frontline as quickly as possible. This gives space for Wolfric to charge in, and same with the other Mammoth. So we're overcasting Burning Head to really make sure that it's as effective as possible. Wolfric will just be charging into the back line. We'll throw spells onto the elite infantry in the back. And we'll bring in our troops to hit the uh, to hit the poison wind globe with yours. Let's see here. We'll have to throw our wind spell again, and now we're trying to duel out against Thrott, who is actually diving in on Wolfric. He's taking a lot of damage, uh, so we'll have to worry there. And I think we're going to send the Manticore to try and assist. Ah, it's the Morskatar's Hellion actually that's hitting up Wolfric. And, okay, we, we desperately need to get him safe now. We're bringing in all of the troops to try and peel for him. And hopefully he can get to a safer position. Uh, that was a really nice trade from my opponent. Rat Ogre Summon coming in now. Uh, but Wolfric, he's now safe. But we have a big blob fight underway. Our Javelins will be firing in at Throt. And Wolfric will be getting into a good position. Uh, this Plague Priest actually is a little bit of a higher priority target. So we'll charge that. And uh, let's see, we're we're, we are really worried about 
those uh, Poison Wind Globadiers actually doing a lot of damage here. Uh, let's see, our caster gets routed too, but not before a big burning head. But so far, things are looking pretty rough. Our Mammoth has taken a lot of damage, and these weapon teams have hit pretty hard. Nevertheless, the Manticore is still doing pretty good. But uh, Wolfric's in a little bit of a rough position. Uh, Throck diving in on top of him is pretty bad, but now Wolfric has his support. And we'll be sending in uh, all of our anti-large troops to try and snipe out Throck. I have javelins here too to support. Uh, and we're going to use our marauders to flank around and shut down the uh, the Gisales. That should be able to keep Wolfric safe. And then hopefully things go well from there. Gisales will be able to fire though. It's a little bit unfortunate. We'll throw down a, a boat up of the infantry here to take care of them. Continue chasing out the Gisales. We have some burning heads that we could throw down too. And with Thwat out of the question, actually getting shattered, the balance of power switches once again into our favor. So a little bit dicey there, but appearing to be a pretty nice comeback as long as uh, we manage to keep Wolfric safe, which is no guarantee. Uh, Morskatar's Hellion has dived in on top of him. And we're going to be running away, trying to keep him as safe as possible. We'll right click quickly on a unit to try and get him the charge bonus leadership buff. But sadly, that does not play out. And instead, uh, Wolfric is on the run. So both factions that don't really perform too well under uh, uh, with their leadership running uh, is an interesting situation. But the balance of power does say that we have the lead here. And we do have some skirmish cavalry too. The fact that we've collapsed on the back line is great also. And we, we've also routed off the Morse Guitars Hellion. So I think we may have just barely pulled it together. Wolfric does rally, since he didn't sh shatter. And we also have our Skin Wolves back. So, some very dicey engagements there, but it's going to be a big terror route from the Skaven. Or big uh, army losses from them. And it's gonna be GG! Okay, so, uh, that went... That was very swingy from both sides. Uh, essentially, I almost threw away uh, Wolfric. But we just barely came out with a big snipe on Thwat uh, when we pulled him back into safety. The Wow, my caster did 16,000 points of damage, but only got a damage value of, uh, of 600. Really shows you how... He really was just hitting Skaven Slaves that game. But nevertheless, still important. Uh, the fact that we had Berserkers there was really good. And geez, I did not expect our Javelin to do this much damage. Okay, so clearly the heroes here. Our double uh, foot Javelin guys. Really good versus unarmored large targets. They took out the Plague Priest. They took out Thra, And they took out the Morse Guitars Hellion. Which is why they got so much value. Uh, the Manticore too with its sniping ability did great. But man, uh, yeah, I guess these guys carried. Uh, who would have guessed? So we've now moved on to our Swiss games against Ice Power Total War. We had to pick first, and we are running the Wood Elves against his Batonia. Opted for a kite build, which means that we want to advance as quickly as possible to really secure... Uh, yeah, to, to secure some... Uh, some extra space here. But we have more room to kite back. Our Way Watchers are going to fire a volley at these Peasant Bowmen. As they are indeed uh, one of the main priority targets for us to shut down. So it uh, looks like Ice Power dodging with those Peasant Bowmen. Uh, and we'll see if he can dodge a split shot between the two of them. And we'll be using our Lord to snipe out the Cavalry. So, so far things are going pretty well. We can even begin cycle charging with our Sisters of Thorn. And we can do this. Because if the archers stop to fire in on them, then we can simply... Uh, yeah, we can simply hit them with our Way Watchers. So these peasant archers have stopped to fire, which means that they can't dodge. And they will be taking a massive volley from those Way Watchers. Already on the verge of routing, which is pretty good. But we still have to keep up the pressure. We watchers are going to fire again at these peasant archers. 
looks like that may be a miss though and it looks like it will be they don't take too much damage there uh and wow our our uh what's it these guys our cavalry is taking a lot of damage they're going to be trying to run away we'll lose a volley at the knights of the realm and uh and continue backing up we're running out of space directly behind us so we're going to start pushing along the right hand side and our way watchers will just uh, keep firing in wherever the opportunity presents itself. The peasant bowmen have uh, have turned. We'll see if his reaction is fast enough. Not enough. And he takes some pretty good damage there. Uh, so now it's time to continue with the kite. We'll turn off fire at will on our lord to, uh, to make sure that she does not get... Uh, so that she doesn't waste her ammo. She'll target fire the Royal Hippogriff Knights. And we're just continuing to push back where we can. We haven't done a whole ton of damage to these peasant archers though. That's definitely a little bit of a worry. Let's see here. We'll fire at the peasant archers again. And uh, yeah, just really trying to, to get them to rout here. Dodge with the Sisters of Thorn. And of course, while they fire, we can get in some damage. But the peasants... Finally closed in. We only have a little bit of extra space left to kite. But for the peasants at the very least, we can hit them with our cavalry, engage with our spears, and hopefully get them routed off. Our way watchers will be firing on these peasant bowmen that have now stopped moving. Our cavalry will be crashing into the infantry here. Um, Knights of the Realm are getting close. And if they do engage, we'll be bringing in our spears and our zotes. So, uh, let's see. What do we want to net? We want to net these... Uh, let's see here. We want to net whatever decides to dive in on us. We still have a ton of spears. And our infantry fights are going okay. Uh, we're dealing with the Royal Hippogriff Knights. But we also want to deal with those pesky archers. Sisters of Thorn have taken a lot of damage. We don't have any healing left on the Zotes for them. But our Branch Wraith can do the same. And as long as we're killing the archers, I think we should be fine here. So it will be hanging back to stop any cavalry from diving in. And uh, we'll send in another unit of spears to fight off those men-at-arms. Our cavalry too will move into support. Our archers will be hitting this juicy cavalry blob. Our spears are engaging in on there too. They should be able to do fine. And uh, if we can take them out, that will be good. The infantry for the Bretonians is falling, but they still have a lot of peasant archers. And they're going to be the priority here. The peasant archers will be able to fight off a lot of my troops. And if it's just cavalry, we actually have so many spears. I'm not as worried about that. Let's see. We get a cavalry charge on my infantry here. And cavalry diving in on this side will net them down. But now it means that my opponent's going to be diving in. We still have spears along the back. We'll be using them to hit Lewin. Uh, in fact, Lewin, now that he's surrounded, will be diving in onto him with everything. And see if, seeing if we can catch him. Uh, it looks like he will be able to escape, but we do get some nice damage on the Royal Hippogriff Knights. And our Way Watchers will be pulling onto this right side, since it's a little bit safer with our spears at the ready. We'll throw down some heals onto the center, and our Zotes will be, uh, let's see, giving some armor to themselves. However, things are looking pretty rough. Let's see here. Lewin has dived in once again, this time on my branch, right? And our Azrai Spears are not holding too great. We actually get mass routes here. Very unfortunate. And I think that's going to be GG. The GG well played. And we'll be closing out that game. So I think the major problem that I had there was just not enough cavalry. Uh, the cavalry is super important for cycle charging. The infantry at the start of the game. And with just the Sisters of Thorn, I wasn't pressuring enough to get the to chase off the peasant archers. Uh, ideally, the peasant archers would all be routed off by the time we got into the late game. And then, uh, what's it? Most of the infantry should have been pretty battered too. Uh, instead, this uh, took a little bit too long getting value on my way watchers. You can see they only got 900 damage each. And then it set us up for uh, for a loss. In the late game. Nevertheless. Pretty fun. Uh, I think in the future. 
Mm, let's see here. Yeah, in the future, I'd probably take a little bit more cavalry and focus on that cycle chart. So here we go. Our game against Ice Power. We are playing Vampire Counts to counterpick his Skaven play. We have a lot of space to flank around. And he's gone for a lot of Poisoners. About the Unclean and a Pack Master. Uh, and that's about it. Probably some stealthy units over there. But generally, nothing too scary. Our Spirit Leeches won't be too important. Uh, and we don't really need to use Bunite either. So we'll be focusing mostly on the healing side of Manfred's magic. It's mostly just Skaven Slaves along the front line. As soon as we're done wheeling our army here. Uh, we should be good. We're going to spread out our troops. Since the mobility here for Skaven is actually pretty thin. And we can start getting our flank going. I expect he likely has Gisales somewhere in the mix there. We'll want to be careful and just constantly maneuvering. Now that the Poison Wind Mortars are in range, we can advance. He hits some zombies, which is not a great first uh, engagement for him. And our goal is going to route off all of these Skaven Slaves along the front line as quickly as possible. Packmasters are coming in. Looks like they want to be sniping out my White Kings. I'm not especially worried about that though. And uh, we'll just be continuing to advance with our infantry. White Kings do actually take a little bit of damage from that engagement. But nevertheless, we'll keep moving up. We'll leave our spears in reserves and try to sneak them through along the sides. So we're posing as a threat along this side, but we're really going to just slam into the Skaven Slaves. Our White Kings will be using... Oh, whoops, that's the wrong ability. Our White Kings will be using... Uh, what's it? Their Scab Scraths. We route off the Skaven Slaves as quickly as possible. And we're now going to engage into these flanks. So there we go. The front line is falling apart, and without the double, uh, without the double pack master there to really support, I think we should be able to run over these lines fairly quickly. The bar gulf is charging in. We have a huge collapse, and these spears are going to chase off the poison wind mortars. The white kings are tanky enough where they'll will, where they will be fine on their own. And uh, let's see, we're going to yeah, just continue advancing. We'll throw up some zombies if they're needed. Uh, and we'll just keep progressing with our troops here. Some of our cavalry does get hit pretty hard. But uh, we're seeing big collapses on the Skaven lines. Uh, let's see here. Our cavalry. And now, I guess, uh, they still need to really fight off these rat ogres. They're going to leave them to do that while bringing the terror geist to shut down the poison wind mortars. That is one of the major AoE pieces for my opponent. Uh, but it does look like Manfred is getting surrounded here by the Brood Horrors. We'll just slow down a summon so he can run away. And then he should be nice and safe. So there we go. Doing okay. Packmasters have engaged on my cavalry. Uh, and how have we done against the Rat Ogres? Not amazing. We actually want to disengage with these guys now if possible. Uh, just because the Rat Ogre Summon did go down. Uh, but otherwise, things are still going pretty well. This uh, Plague Priest, though, will want to hunt him down with our single entities. And wow, our cavalry is getting really beat up. That is uh, that is not great. Want to heal them up as soon as possible. And we're going to let go of this left flank to try and win this fight along the side here. The Terror Geist is moving in. We are bringing in our cavalry. And we'll be using our White Kings, let's see here, to, uh, I guess, try and scab scrap these Clan Rat Spears. Go down another scab scrap here. And uh, keep going for that Plague Priest, our cavalry with their mobility, and chase off the Poison Wind Mortars. But, Double Pack Master is coming in hot. That's a little bit of a worry, uh, but maybe we can just get a pick here. We'll dive in on top of them, leaving some cavalry chase off the poison wind mortars but uh primarily we want to be trying to kill off these single entities here and routing them off the vargulf too a little bit uh distracted ended up not disengaging as well as i wanted to but now escaping is going to move in and deal with the pack master and if we can just kill off the single entities that may be our uh our goal to success here but uh, we'll have to see how that goes. My Vargulf is actually still getting stuck. It looks like some rat ogres are pinning him down. 
And that is very, very bad. The Plague Priest escaping. The rat and uh, my Vargulf is having a very hard time. So uh, let's see. What are we going to do? Uh, we're going to pull back this Terror Geist. Heal up uh, our single entities here. And also summon in some zombies to support. We're going to fight Thra, even though it's not exactly an opportunistic engagement. Since uh, we are taking a lot of damage here. But uh, it's all the Hail Mary we got. Poison Wind Mortars are firing in. And we do mostly just have single entities left. Now Throt is getting pretty low and our main play is going to be trying to finish him off. Sending in our single entities to dive in on top of him. Going to throw down a breath attack. And it does pretty good damage. A land from the Terror Geist too should be able to to get um to route we're now going to attempt to chase him off but it looks like thought may be able to make it out alive nevertheless our single entities are still fighting decently well here Ooh, we waste a heal on the vargulf that is very unfortunate and it's just our single entities left nevertheless thought has still taken a lot of damage the terror guys is still doing good and if we can just kill him that would be great a uh, big problem though is that manfred is at quite low HP. But nevertheless, we should be able to engage these guys. And hopefully that goes okay. Uh, some friendly fire from the Poison Wind Mortars are very much appreciated too. So hopefully there's some misplays there. But still, things are looking quite rough. It just depends on how well we actually finish off Thwat here. We'll turn our single entities to fight against him. But, oh man, he does manage to slip away. The Plague Priest is still doing pretty well. And we do have one more zombie summon here. We'll throw that down. So that we can pull out with the Terror Geist. And then uh, we'll be trying to hunt Thwat down again. We take out the Plague Priest. And we have Scab Scraps. So we're going to throw them down. Onto all of these clan rats. And hopefully get a mass route from them. Let's see here. We'll throw them lengthwise. And it looks like... That does indeed cause the intended effect. It is a mass route on that front. But Manfred is getting quite low. Not to mention the pack master is still quite healthy. Uh, so we'll see how this does. I'm hoping these guys fire in just for that friendly fire effect. But our single entities here might not be enough to really finish out the game. Thought has been quite slippery. And even if we do kill him, that pack master will be quite worrisome. He does disengage. We'll chase him with the single entities is uh, legal as of the advent of the new banner rules and hopefully we can get a catch but he is quite mobile the rat ogres pull away let's chase off my terror geist so it does move in and it looks like he might get a hit on manfred we'll throw down a breath attack in right on top of him getting in some pretty good damage and we're going to dive in onto him once again the single entity rng could always swing things in our favor and that is what we're trying to really bank on here Thwat taking some big hits from my single entities. So it's not over yet. And we just need some lucky hits here. Let's see here. Uh, some misses. We'll continue retargeting. But it's looking like army losses. And that's going to be GG well played for ice power. Ooh, so I think the major misplay there was letting my cavalry. getting uh, Letting them get caught along the flank. You can see they got very little value. Uh, instead, what I should have been doing... Oh, whoops. I accidentally gave myself a win last game. Daisies. Yo, Ice Power is 2-0 against us. Yeah, the Cavalry. I should have split them up along the sides. Since the Pack Masters are much less effective when split apart. And then probably tried to snipe them better with the Terror Geist and Vargulf. Instead, I let a lot of my troops along the flank get caught up. And that is what caused the game. So, some big misplays on my part. The Poison Wind Mortars, of course, as usual, did pretty well. I don't know if the bug still counts friendly fire damage, but this is just because uh, I didn't manage my cavalry properly. Nice. Here we go for what may very well be the final game against Ice Power. We've gone for a dreaded Lizardman kite build. That's right, it's a lot of skinks to skirmish. The uh, Umbral Tide. We'll be firing away at these Blackguard. And uh, and just a single entity 
Just, uh, yeah, in the form of Quarkar with Hand of the Gods. Should be able to do pretty good. Now, what's this? Uh, Malice Dark Blade. Very interesting choice. So we're just going to move up our Skirmishers. And while he's focused on the Black Guard, trying to dodge with them to the best of his abilities, we're going to Hand of the Gods Malice, taking off a third of his HP. Generally leading to a pretty nice start. We're going to retreat with the Umbral Tide. Get them back into a safe position. And uh, continue with the Skirmish. Dark Shards have fired in. Luckily for our Missile Resist, though, we're still pretty comfortable. Salamanders have lost a few models at this point. But nevertheless, uh, we should still be able to do quite well. The uh, Dread Spears will be able to shield for the infantry here. But uh, as long as we keep punishing the Black Guard, I think we should be fine. We're moving in the Skinks onto the sides to hit up the Dark Shards. And as long as we keep dodging with Krokgar, we should be able to uh, avoid most of the Bolt Thrower shots. So now retreating back. Malice has moved in. We're going to try going in for a surround against him. These Dark Shards are uh, taking a good amount of damage, but not amazing. And we're seeing some cavalry engagements on the left side now. However, we have a lot of skinks to support, so that should be fine. And with the summon coming down from my opponent, we can simply just retreat. However, he does have a lot of firepower. We'll have to be a little bit careful here. Malice charging in for a second shot at my skinks. Uh, actually getting surrounded now. Could turn out badly for him. We'll have to see. Uh, and maybe we can even get a transformation on him. That's a big hope, but... Could happen. Let's see here. We'll uh, we'll just continue firing in on him. Blackguard are moving in. But we're going to move in Krokgar now. And with the cavalry losing the fight on that flank, could go pretty well. Krokgar is going to go for the Manticore. Since the Manticore is much more, uh, much more vulnerable here. Malice can just transform. And if we can just route that off, that should be nice. We're going to send in our own Manticore onto Malice. And there we go, Krokgar has successfully dealt with that issue. Uh, so now it's seeing if we can actually get Malice to transform here. We'll run away from the cavalry on that flank. And now we're going to dive in on Malice. It looks like he does Krok his transformation. We will disengage, Krok all of our buffs, and simply get out of there. Malice is quite a scary threat, and we do not want to be taking an extended fight against him. We're going to be charging after Krokgar. And uh, let's see, some Dread Spears over here. We can actually get a free pick on them. Same with these Dread Spears. That should go pretty well. And uh, we'll see if we can actually take out Malice here. We have lost a lot of Chameleon Skinks. Not great. And uh, if we can just surround him with our cavalry here, I think that should be able to just kill him outright. Uh, it's a lot of damage here. A Manticore summon has gone down, however. Uh, but I think we should still be okay. Umble Tide will move them in to deal with the Dark Shards and with these guys. And I need to decide where my second Manticore summon will be going down. Disengage with our troops there. And now move in our Skinks to deal with those Bolt Throwers. Been pretty pesky the whole game. We could take them out that would be great malice we're going to try and line up a hand of the gods here don't know if it'll hit a manticore but oh man some pretty nice hits onto malice it's quite good we'll throw down our second manticore summon and continue using our mobile forces to stretch out the lines of my opponent with malice nearly gone i'm feeling confident more confident by the second and uh, a last charge from Krokgar should be able to finish him off. So there we go, Krokgar is coming in. We'll throw down a physical resist buff to make sure that he does not die. And uh, now it's shutting down these bolt throwers. Once they're down, that should be a pretty nice lead. And with Malice Dark Blade down, things are looking up. Uh, let's see, just because the bolt throwers will be down, the Salamanders still have decent ammunition. And specifically, Krokgar is an absolute beast here. Uh, let's see, but can we actually shut down the bolt throwers? It looks like that's a yes. Krokgar is still doing pretty good. We'll charge him into the Dread Spears, bring in our cavalry to support. And now the Dark Shards here are routing off. There are still some Blackguard of Nagarond, but they're really slow. 
and we're not too worried about them. Uh, just because... Yeah, we'll be able to shoot them down with skinks in the late game. They really shouldn't be any problem. Let's see here. We'll save Flocks of Doom for the Black Guard at the end of the game. The Umbral Tide can deal with all of these range units. Let's see here. Uh, there we go. We'll send in some skinks to shut down the Dark Shards. And with Krokgar, we should be able to really secure any of these fights quite well. The Supreme Sorceress, important to take out since she does indeed provide leadership for the lizard uh, for the for the dark elves so we'll snipe her out and then uh finish off those uh what's it reaper bolt throwers while moving in Krokgar. finish off the dark shards that are actually focus firing him now nice play from ice power but i think we should be able to keep Krokgar alive now it is really important that we keep the humble tide alive too like i said for the black guard and we have a lot of ammunition now to actually kill off that Dark Elf Elite Infantry. As for the Bolt Throwers, we'll hit them with the Skinks. And it looks like the strategy of pulling him apart has worked out quite well. Krokgar is getting surrounded by Blackguard, but he's mobile enough where we can disengage. Pull him away. And uh, nice, that's another Bolt Thrower model chased off. So here we go, it's the Battle of the Blackguard. Will they be able to carry out the game, or will they simply get out skirmished? Looking like that may very well be the case. Uh, and because of that, we're going to turn off fire at will for our skinks. This is because we don't want them to be shooting at the dread spears. Dread spears, of course, are much cheaper than blackguard and not really a high priority target. Krokgar will be safely chasing off these troops in the distance. We don't really need him here. And it looks like... We successfully carried out the win. So nice. Uh, essentially, a lot of that came down to our ability to snipe out Malice in the early game. Sadly, he, uh, he just was not able to really carry out the win against the might of Krokgar. 2,300 damage against his 100. Very disappointing. Even with his transformation, he didn't really do much. We just uh, focused him down and surrounded him with cavalry. So there we go. The Skinks performed quite well. I think we managed the Manticores really well too. Uh, so all in all, I think pretty well played. And a fun game. So for the final game, it's a Cavalry Rush. I knew it. So uh, Ice Power has gone for a Cavalry Rush. He knows my playstyle, And that means immediately we have to close up these lines of infantry zombies as best as we can. We have dogs along the side who are going to try to flank around and hit the infantry. And we've split up our uh, our bombers here to, uh, to hit them up. We'll summon a unit of pistol mobs to slow down the cavalry. And the dogs are just going to be running and distracting. In the back line, pistoliers have closed in onto my deck gunners. The charge bonus actually proving quite useful. And uh, let's see, the right flank has Volkmar coming in hot. Now, the deck owners have taken a lot of damage, but they've done a lot of damage to these Empire Knights, not to mention the Bombers have done amazing too. But Volkmar has closed in onto the back line. That is a huge threat, throwing down a lot of AoEs, but now we're going to turn guns and fire on him. Our front line is holding pretty well. We'll ensure that with the usage of some summons. And that will mean that our ranged troops here will be able to fire in on Volkmar freely without worrying about this front line getting collapsed on. We're sacrificing some sirens to hold down Volkmar as long as possible. We're using our scurvy dogs to continue running. We actually lost one unit of them, a big misplay on my part. But we've dealt with the infantry lines, which is pretty big. Volkmar 2 has taken a lot of damage, and uh, we still have handguns just shooting into them as much as possible. The choice of halberds here has worked out quite well for us, and... With the infantry running out for the Empire, this could be a good situation. However, Volkmar still relatively healthy. He won't be going down anytime soon. And a big burning head clears up my infantry. Definitely a little bit worrisome. But our deck dropper bombers have done quite well. Our scurvy dogs surrounding the caster doing quite well too. And uh, let's see, how's Volkmar and where is he? 
He's over here. We'll turn guns to fire. But the Empire forces have collapsed onto the back line. Oh dear. So, uh, we have killed off most of the infantry. We still have dogs hounding down the enemy infantry. Uh, but Volkmar is still quite healthy. And it seems like our focus fire attempt may have gone sideways. The fact that he is actually still on the map. It's a very rough situation. We still have deck dropper bombers. It's just that these Empire Knights are still relatively healthy. We're going to summon a unit of pistol mobs over here along the right hand side. And Volkmar has retreated to begin regenerating. It's important that we keep our dogs alive. But we run out of handgun units. That is absolutely devastating. Uh, so we'll have to see if we can recover here. A ton of cavalry have dived into onto my halberds. And here we go. We're going to go for Hail Mary play. Great Storm on Noctilus. We're turning all of our guns to fire in on him. And we're going to charge these Empire Knights in the back with our bats. The zombie summon. Hold against the spears, but a big banishment comes down. And we'll have to see. Volkmar is still quite healthy. And I think that may be it. But what's this? A unit of Sirenes is still alive. That is amazing. And we'll see if that plays out. Uh, our bats have also routed off a lot of these troops. Oh man, my scurvy dogs are getting really low. Uh, if the scurvy dogs die, that is very rough. And Volkmar is still at high HP too. But look at the Empire forces. They've had a mass route. And... Oh man, my scurvy dog's are gonna die. Oh, that's really crappy. Oh man, one of the key units to win here. Routing off. How terrible. And uh, we don't have a ton of uh, casters too. Oh man, uh, let's see. So, not casters, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we don't have a ton of anything really. Just Noctilus. The balance of power has swung again in the favor for my opponent. And now I have to decide how I want to use my Winds of Magic. The Sirenes are gone, so healing is much less effective. Uh, and the ammunition on our bats is really low. These Empire Knights are quite healthy. But we might be able to chase them off with the bats. So that's going to be the goal. We'll just continue chasing them. And we'll use our pistol mobs to try and kill this Bright Wizard. Or at least get him to rout. Noctilus lands a solid hit on top of him. And he's going to be coming off the battlefield. But it's still Volkmar the Grim looking quite healthy. Quite grim. And he will be healing up to full. That is a very bad situation. Noctilus will be charging in towards him. And... Ooh, we accidentally used up the ammunition on our remaining bats. That's pretty bad. Now, here we go. Volkmar also has some AoEs. So we'll wait for them to clump up here. And then we'll get a zombie summon. Uh, let's see, along the side. But we really want him to clump up first. We also very much want to chase off those Empire Knights. And let's see, where can we summon these pistol mobs in a way that'll do well for us? Looking like he's just holding up Noctilus with his infantry. We've successfully chased off those knights, but it's very important that we time this summon correctly. Let's see here. Some knights in the back are positioning. Volkmar is standing safe. Uh, but if we can get our bats in here, that would be good. Not to mention Noctilus, quite the beast himself, and also a Wraith Storm. Uh, the Wraith Storm will be quite important. He has the hunger and he will be able to heal. So as long as we don't hit army losses, I think we should be fine. A big charge in from the cavalry comes in. Another charge from Volkmar. And it's a lot of infantry deciding to engage. Volkmar is looking the wrong direction. We're going to summon the pistol mobs. And let's see if he has what it takes to actually shut them down. We'll turn on guard mode and we'll be firing into the backs. But Noctilus gets hit very, very hard. Oh, and he crumbles away. No. Oh, GG. Well played. Two ice power. Oh my gosh. Noctilus. Oh, he overcast damage. Oh no. Ah, oh, terrible. Terrible. I think we, we might have been able to pull it back there, but it was really close. And it was Ice Power's game to win it there. Sadly, we get knocked out. Uh, our bats did well, but I also lost this unit of dogs to Empire Knights early on. If I had kept running with them, they actually would have won me the game. Turning the guns to Volkmar too was a bad idea, given that he did survive. 
The goal was to snipe him out quickly to secure the victory. But in this case, what ended up happening was that Volkmar just tanked a lot of the damage. Uh, instead, I should have turned the guns to fire in on the remainder of the cavalry, and in the late game, just surround Volkmar and kill him with Noctilus. Uh, that would have been the much better play, but it looks like that shall be the end of this Swiss League tournament best of five.